What's up guys? This is the Roman and I am back to bring you the next episode of my Empire to the War. Let's play as Louisiana. So to round to uh remind you guys of what happened in the last part, if you don't remember, um the ultimate last turn phase was ridiculously long, and so much so that I was um almost about to throw the towel in on the whole campaign. And that's mainly because it got to about twenty minutes or so prior with 20 minutes or so to about end their turn before I could actually do anything. And because right now I'm in a phase of the game where I can't do much during each end turn phase, I was tempted to rerun the campaign. However, I have since run the campaign on somewhat, only a couple of turns, and the turn times have got significantly better. Not so good that I would probably show you them yet, um, but better that I can stand to uh, record and uh, sit here twiddling my thumbs for... I think it takes about two minutes to get past the Ottoman bit, but it's like three minutes all in, and I'm going through lots of turns, and just not great to show. Um, but what have I done in the intervening periods? Well, I've mainly been upgrading government buildings where possible, I've been building roads, and I have also built Oneida. I've demolished it from a weaver's cottage up to a school, which I can now use to research technologies and because I'm currently in quite a peaceful position um, I've done a couple of things firstly I have um, firstly I have decided to knock my trade and tax levels way down to spur growth and to spur development of well to grow the wealth of my towns and I'm also going to re researching in my first tech um, common land enclosures so it takes four turns, but I've got loads and loads of farms in my territory. So I think it would be really worthwhile to build these up to help spur on the growth of these towns. And there is going to be a bottleneck on how far I can develop without a proper city. And the city I end up taking will probably be Philadelphia. But for now, that's okay. Um, my southern borders are safe. They're protected with allied nations. Um, to the north, I'm also safe. I've got good relations with the Huron. I'm also trading with them, I think. I oh, know. Tempted to. But I'm still friendly with them. Obviously, the French are my allies. So my only real axis of potential attack is going to be up through these hills. Um, so Niagara's potentially at risk from um, 13 colonies intervention. But really, my main exploitation route can now be going from New Orleans to try and take out some of these pirate regions to help expand our trade income because right now um, our trade income is yeah, tax is only 500 trade is 4600 so we need well we do need a strong navy and that also means realistically because i can't progress down the naval tree the best thing for me to do is to take somewhere and build a fishing fleet because a fishing fleet you can um, a fishing fleet you can build up to its max level without technology I think and its max level can also produce fourth rate ships of the line so that's pretty good and one potential target later on could be the Pueblo Nations but we are very friendly with them so I'm tempted to kind of leave them alone and we shall see um, so we've got 900 gold left I don't think I've got anything realistic to spend it on so I think I'm going to hit and turn. So be prepared for lots of lots of jump cuts while I while I hop in and out. So see you in the next turn. Huh? I may even actually end up just keep recording. So whatever whatever the Ottomans were doing previously, they've stopped doing it. So actually, it does stutter still on the Ottoman end turn phase, but not very long. I do like showing the end turns as much as possible because it sh keeps you guys updated on what's going on in the wider world. Stuff that's not necessarily re re um, relevant for me directly in the campaign. But stuff that could be useful later on. See, the pirates are gathering their strength but not within range of our ships. See, it's mainly been growing these buildings up to governor's mansion levels. And we're still we're converting this territory back well, towards Catholicism to help get rid of the religious unrest. 
resistance to foreign occupation is going to go down and help a lot of help a lot to offset the clamor for reform. Um, roads are a good investment because they help provide overall growth to the region. So let's build. See, do I build a governor's mansion or to build another ship? I want to upgrade someone to an admiral. Sapphire. That's the name of one of the. Oh, maybe. That's going to be the one I upgrade, but I'm actually going to keep wanting to. While, while things are relatively peaceful, keep growing my. Keep growing my economy, because right now I've not got a overriding naval threat. I do need to have a strong navy. Um, but yeah, you guys will get to witness an Ottoman end turn, and we'll soon see if uh, things get better. Because it's, it's still stuttering, but it is still progressing. Um. Yeah, we will. Yeah, that one progressed really quickly. Um, so we will need a strong navy, no doubt. But I think it's good just to lay the gr the groundwork of a core tax base now, while we don't have to immediately churn out ships. Especially as the pirates are leaving us alone, it would be nice to go and take some more ships. We have another gentleman, which is great because he can go straight to the yes. school. So one more turn till we get the next level the next level um, uh, farm buildings well not farm building but okay let's keep building keep our road building initiative going although we don't have enough cash to do that so I might spend the remaining cash to build another fifth rate let's get 2600 next turn I do want to go take a take some pirate ships and also maybe grow this fleet into a sh into a fleet that I can send to one of the trade zones. That would be very profitable. Because this game can be... Well, I've been told by quite a few people that this campaign, or this faction, lives and dies on the strength of its navy. And its exploitation of the navy. So right now, things are okay. We, I suppose our main, our main objectives are A, to keep our ports open and protected and also to keep New Spain's port open and protected. And part of the reason why the Pueblo Nations becomes a useful target to knock out eventually is that it does open a land route between our capital and New Mexico, making that trade link A, almost impossible to interfere with, and B, it opens up another trade slot within our empire. So there is a possibility that any force we do raise in my capital goes west first because it's common land enclosures that's a whole bunch of farming upgrades and obviously because of our limits limited amount of funds there's only so many we can progress it's probably smart just to pick the ones with the highest yields but realistically we're not so bothered about that so we are making less cash because I've knocked the provinces right back there's still problems with... Well, you can... There's only a thousand people in New Orleans, so I can't, there's a really, there is a limit on to how many people I can recruit. I can't build too many massive armies. So growing these forts, growing these um, farms is pretty critical to help grow the population. Because we don't get benefits to immigration and things like that. So the amount of tax income is small that we gain, but the main gain is to help grow, grow our towns. Oh no, I didn't optimise the, uh, I didn't pick the new technology to research. So we're going to burn a turn doing something fairly useless, and also it's really quite nice having Spain, having Spanish missionaries on the continent, and also being A, friendly with Spain, but mainly we are also Catholic, so... We don't have any major concerns about religious difficulties, not from our Spanish allies. The 13 colonies has been moving their priests around in response to me sending my priest over to their territory. So it might be a bit of a waste of effort to kind of get involved in a religious war with them unless they try and do it to me. Let's keep 
growing the farms. And the next turn I would like to upgrade the roads here. So you started to get animal husbandry. Common uh, improve animal husbandry, but really could probably do with physiocracy. To get that overall gain in town wealth and also upgrades to our plantations, because we do have a big yield sugar plantation, low yield tobacco, and also meager yield cotton. Because you can export to adjacent territory, so this cotton plantation can export through all the way down here in Mobile. So that's probably a good target. Austria and France are at war. And we have a new ship. And it is sorely tempting to send these guys to a trade zone. Because we're not really at war. So I think I might do it. What's the most valuable trade resource? Ivory. So let's go to... West Africa. I knew with some of our ships, and I do need to start building up more. Okay, sail around the pirates. Hopefully they can get into deep enough water. It probably would be, would be better to go here. But I don't... Well, assuming there's any difference. There probably is. But I don't want to go too close to the pirate homelands. So I probably want to go up here somewhere safe. Get into deep water. And then be away. We also get some visibility on what the garrison at Nassau looks like. A bunch of chaff. <laughs> hey, let's click enter. Now the Brits are coming in to invade France. And France should beat them. Especially with the, although the amount of troops they've got, they should win. Our forces need to be on alert. I don't. We're not at war with Britain. But we could potentially be called into one. Yeah, see, so the Ottoman end turn that was... It was so bad it made me consider restarting. Now is just gone. So I'm so glad I didn't and I persevered through a couple of bad turns. There is a chance that our fleet may get a bit of a bit of a, uh, abuse from pirates in other trade theatres. And you can see the pirates pirate fleet isn't exactly weak so we do want to start building a new fleet so it's time to get more ships more farms built let's get you guys out to one of the trade theatres in Darth Mod any ship is a trade ship it's like the old proverb not proverb <laughs> saying let's see, any ship can be a minesweeper once so we're not at war with Britain, so I don't think this is a problem for us. They don't like us, so they could turn on us. This is their army from the UK, but I'd like to think the French will go and take them out. Yeah, we are making very little cash. It's all about growing our tax base. I do love trade. I love trade. Big fan. But... It can be very, very dangerous to have your entire economy based off of it. Unless, of course, you're a global empire who has ships coming out of the wazoo and you've got bases all over the world. and Then it's a lot less tricky, but you still would rather not be in that position. So I'd like to get some ivory trade nodes occupied. But chances are they might be full. And if they are full, West Africa is already filling up. Or East Africa is filling up. I do want to oh, see. So they are they now? Okay, I was about to say, has the AI decided now? I've moved my my navy away. They're going to be more offensive. One more turn to get physiocracy. I can't really afford to build another army yet down here to take out the pirates. So I do want to develop physiocracy to help growth. Villages, villages are not growing. But I can't really impact, I can't really do anything about that directly yet. Because our tax, you know, our, the impact on the lower classes is already as slow as it can get. So maybe I have to go for four field crop, crop, crop rotation after I get physiocracy. 
Although that is nine turns. That's a long time. So I might have to work through some of these social technologies first. We don't. You don't yet have any towns to exploit. Um, to research our industrial tax, so may as well just leave them to it. Okay, well, let's immediately add another ship onto the recruitment queue. And obviously, sound Soundberg is still. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, the Brits are. Uh, they're trying. In a way, it might be beneficial for them to win. For the Brits to take somewhere, because eventually, when we declare, well, when we go to war, it's more territory for us. Eventually, we will obviously turn on our old colonial masters and become. We will become the true colonizers. But for now, we remain a fairly inconsequential presence on the continent. So I don't want to send any of my ships down here to try and ambush any of these individual ships because I don't want my fleet to then get ambushed by a much bigger pirate fleet. Okay, so you've got physiocracy. Empiricism, I suppose, because it's only two turns. But we're going to really start cranking up the growth rate. Although lots of these areas are going to take a lot of turns to grow. These guys aren't growing at all. Population is still 1,000. Fleet arrives. So, is this ship empty? No, Corlin's there. Ha! The question is, do we... Do we... Grab two. So, with em in Empire, the trade is... It does drop off every additional ship you add on. So, in theory, two ships... Like every ship you add on, the amount you gain is less. So two fleets with two ships on each node should produce more stuff than one stack of four. That's my assumption anyway. And that is already a healthy boost in income. Gone from about 2,600 to 3,700 cash. So much so, we'll probably end up building more ships to send to more trade theatres. Let's build another ship. Awesome. Or at least send add some more ships to those fleets to help them remain strong. So if I move you over the border, start to interfere with your religious um religious happiness. Jughead. So the Brits are Aha! Call my allies to help. So they are gonna go for my territory. Understandable. We knew it was going to happen. One thing I didn't check was are the 13 colonies involved? Well, they are. I can see the... No, that's the border of our captured territory. Because the 13 colonies may be involved. No, they aren't. They didn't join them, which is nice. Which means we can actually do a limited land grab on their territories in the Bahamas. And in Jamaica as well. It's an interesting position to be in. We've got a lot of hooks. So our army of nothing here was attacked. So this one of Theodore. Don't know why I couldn't can't do that directly, but whatever. Oh no. You're very unhappy. Okay, let's exempt you from income, from tax. That doesn't really help. Should really have tested that before I left. Okay, well, you may as well continue the attack. I'll probably be pretty much attacking them and coming back will be the quickest way to solve this problem. I may as well build a governor's barracks. Or... No, I don't build another fleet. Actually, I know what I do build. I build roads. Road building. Sweet. So one term we get empiricism. And I really hope the French don't choose now to attack, because then that splits our territory. 
And thankfully they haven't. Have the Bahamas changed hands? That doesn't look like British red. Or it could be. Or does that look like Cherokee? Huh. Well, to be honest, all the reds, I suppose. Maybe they blend in during the end turn phase. Also, Moose Factory up there is an interesting opportunity as well. That will probably be my route. Oop, here come the Cherokees, so we need to attack quickly before we lose this territory. Maybe I shouldn't have called them in. Retroactively, that might have been a good idea. Okay, so these guys, we're going to attack the British. So we don't have any artillery, but we have the cavalry advantage. And we should be able to outmaneuver them. So let's go take them out. But that army's probably going to go back to plas um, to placate their territory. My uh, Iroquois territory. Then I'll probably march them north and go take Moose Factory if I can get passage. Okay, let's form a fairly conventional battle line. Okay, we're going to go with the uh, the um, we're going to go with the Zulu way of war. We're going to have our I can't remember it's the head and the the head and the horns. So this is our head, and they're going to advance forward. And then the horns, our melee infantry, they're going to go around the flanks. also going to group up our cavalry because they will also be part of the, the horns. Bringing artillery in, in reinforcements as, as reinforcements have right up here. It looks like they are running an attempt to join them. So let's run our infantry, including our. Oh, I didn't mean to group you guys together. Run. Okay, you guys are still not running. Yep. We're going to advance up into musket range. My cavalry is going to hold position because they've got spikes. My auxiliary are going to push up. There's their pikemen. They are who we want to provoke a response to. Who we want to provoke a response from. So that's the marines and a regiment of horse. They're better, they are better than my... Okay, let's bring in my melee infantry. Our auxiliary is having a good time against their cavalry. Gotta go. I left my cavalry there in a bit of a weird spot. Okay, where's my infantry push up and the cavalry go around the rear the general it is their general I do appreciate they've now got okay bring you guys back to hit the cavalry you guys bunch up ready to withstand the charge You guys get back. D 
didn't really want to lose my cavalry in the earlier attack. Charge in, pikemen. General on. That's the Marines taken care of. As long as my guys are steady, that's okay. So one of you get back, the other kill the Marines. These native warriors should pack them off their horses fairly quickly. Spread my cavalry out at a safe distance. My melee infantry can charge into the gaps to try and cross over the barricades to provide fire. I want these guys ready take on the enemy. So you guys go after the pikemen. What I don't want to do is charge my men into the into the, these spikes. That's when particularly particularly concerned about. It would very much be in our interest to knock out as many of these troops as they can. Or as I can. The other chase down the main guns. Absolutely continue. We've got some good stuff here. My elite infantry may, well, my, my pike infantry may actually be able to kill some units. You guys better hold fire. four of them left but it's just safer to get my foot infantry out of the way so they don't get killed on any charges good stuff you get killed the 33rd you guys go after the 24th of them Guys go after the 36th, which is the last unit on the field, I think. Yeah. Close. It wasn't close. My well, granted my strategy did fall apart fairly quickly. Look at that, they have they've gone from 2200 to 5. So you can repair, and we can immediately send cavalry detachment back to this territory to bring them back under back under our control so I would be tempted to try and go take moose factory but I do obviously have to be aware of the fact that I'm now at war with Great Britain and that means including their navy yeah they were on strike but not anymore and I can tax them as well so they've got for empiricism and physiocracy I could probably well I can't do any of these hmm May as well go for. Do I go for social contract or do I go for 
Crop rotation. I think I've got to do crop rotation. Good. Strategist. Raoul Donoville. Please be my army guy. Yeah, it is. Sweet. So I would like to build an army down here, but... Because obviously Nassau would be my first stop. Then it'd be down to Port Royal in Jamaica. More trade goods. The problem is making sure you've got an army that can actually act on it. Which I think we do. See, if I took... Um, if I took uh, Rupert's land, that would then add um, furs to our trade portfolio. Because they do have lots of furs up there. And now I know I'm not going to be at war with the 13 colonies because of it. There's an option to run my armies up there once the situation settled down a bit. And push north. Hmm. I mean, obviously, I could. Things could go to war. I could go to war against um, 13 colonies pretty quickly. But I don't want to sail my army up around to Rupert's Land. Because I was asking to get intercepted and destroyed. So I could probably do... Well, it's only Zebex. I don't really want those. I was going to say, I could probably start stealing some of these, like, ships, but... What's the point? So we know what Nassau's garrison looks like. Ready and Not wait. very big, but did you move to... Yeah, so they moved over here to get the pirates out of the territory. Oh no, that does leave you exposed. Unless I move... Do I move all my ships out of there? To help protect this one galleon? Maybe not all of them. I want one of them to stay in port. There we go. Cuba is a lovely region to take. Um, okay, so we've got the boosts to our plantations. The plantation upgrades have been built. So we've got cotton, tobacco, and sugar. Which is just cotton, just, but let's see what's. Sugar is meager, cotton is meager, and tobacco is low. We could do the maths to work it out, but. I ain't interested in that. Just build up. Build up my economy, spend a bit of cash trying to make some of these regions feel better. While we crank out the turns. It's going to be a bit inevitable at this point because we don't really have the economy to pursue war on a grand scale. Especially as we don't have any, we can't pursue any military technologies at all. That's quite a big dependency on the quality of your troops. Because if you've got absolutely low quality troops, they have no bayonets, no advanced firing techniques, no nothing. Then things are really bad. That's a really bad position to be in. So war with the 13 colonies is at some point going to be inevitable. But there's not a lot we can do about it. It's 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 not just inevitable, it has to happen. At some point. At some point to be determined. But only when we've done a bit more strengthening of our own economy, because they're probably going to come through our borders like a leaky sieve. Still just going for the governor's mansions. You need recruited the Gulf of Mexico. Let's bring you guys back. Can't afford any trade upgrades, so it's going to have to be government building upgrades. So I'm probably going to go. This guy's going to be. Well, which one's the biggest? Niagara's the biggest, so Niagara may end up being a military governor's encampment. 
in order to try and, and ultimately and be able to recruit infantry somewhere near the border. I do see you. Okay, so let's do a bit of replenishment first. Just in case they're up to something. Because they could just be marching a British army down from here. Hmm. Maybe there's an argument to recruit some more militia. Our priest that's currently doing nothing, he could scout the scout the land up to Rupert's land. Cool. But without look well, see with I was about to say without further ado, um looking at the end looking at the timer, it's time to end the part. So, thanks for watching guys. Sorry nothing major has happened um really in this part, but you know, we're a small country. What are you gonna do? Radio. Thanks for watching guys. Hope you've enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.